fantastic day today. Uh, there's a word from God. Uh, just uh, uh, doubly excited today. Uh, you know, just uh, my youngest son celebrating his 31st birthday today and uh, uh, along with uh, my one of my oldest and dearest friends, uh, Brother Emory White, celebrating his birthday today. And uh, just a birthday shout out to, to both of those uh, young men. And uh, uh, you, you know, it, 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 I, I remember the day Virgil was born, I was stuck at work. And I called Emory to take Daisy, but Daisy was in labor, and I couldn't take her. I, I, I'm at work, and I called Emory. And he took Daisy on his birthday uh, so she could go and deliver Virgil. And uh, that was just uh, one of those days that you never forget. But we let's get back on point. But, but happy birthday to those guys. Uh, you know, we've continued this series of messages today, and let me just start out with a word of prayer, and then we're going to go, we'll, we'll presume. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you right now for the, the privilege of standing before your people and sharing the unadulterated word of God. So I ask you right now for preaching power. Hide all green behind the cross and allow your word to go forth with power and clarity that somebody might be saved that somebody might be delivered, that somebody might be transformed by the renewing of their minds. And we just ask you this in the precious and mighty name of Jesus and for his sake, amen. Uh, the title of our message today is Treasure in Earthen Vessels. Now, now we, we've, um, we, we've continued this, this series of messages. Uh, you know, we had been going through the Gospel of St. Luke and when we got into the 22nd chapter, uh, we were heading uh, into the, 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 the time, the passion season. So I decided I would interrupt that so that we would line up, uh, we could finish the chapter, we could finish the Gospel of Luke uh, in time for uh, the Resurrection Sunday to have the Resurrection Sunday message. Now, if you study Luke, you remember the last week in Jesus' life, actually, the triumphal entry was in Luke chapter 19. And, and uh, although it took us, oh, probably about four months to get from chapter 19 to chapter 22, it's still only dealing with one week, the last week of the life of Jesus. So I had to kind of interrupt some stuff. So we, we I, 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 uh, to, to, to fill in some time, we went to Second Corinthians, and, and we, we and I just kind of jumped right in, and, and after looking at, uh, 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 yeah, I think we, we, I just kind of jumped in at chapter five, and, and chapter five was so pregnant with with truth, I got stuck there, and, and you know, once you start looking at scripture, you see one thing, and the, the Lord reveals something to you, and uh, you see some key words, and you realize you got to go further. And, and I started in chapter 5, and I realized I need to go backwards. And that's what, you know, if you recall, that's what we've been doing. Uh, the, the message last week, uh, actually the last two weeks, uh, was uh, dealing with the, uh, uh, um, the, the glory of suffering. Uh, we, we started the series uh, uh, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade me and that's what the, the Apostle Paul penned those words uh, in, in chapter 5 verse 11 and, and when I saw that word knowing therefore whatever you have, and I said this last time or previous times when you see that word therefore in a message you need to see what he was talking about Therefore, and, and the whole, the context of the whole Second Corinthians is the gospel. He's making a case for preaching the gospel, and he is trying to instruct and exhort those who will come after him to continue to preach the gospel. That's what Paul's whole, uh, that's what the tenor of the whole book was about. Preaching the gospel. Why we need to preach the gospel. Why you need to preach it accurately and truthfully uh, with, with foresight 
handling the word, rightly handling the word, rightly dividing the word. And Jesus, uh, uh, Paul said he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation. So, and, and that's what he, that's what he did. And y'all know, I usually, I just started at one verse and I worked my way through, but I couldn't do it with this one. You, you could have dropped me at any place and you're going to be dealing, dealing with another gospel message. And, and, and Paul, that was Paul's mission in life. Uh, uh, because that was the only thing that he wanted to do was to preach the gospel. Why? Because the gospel is the only way people are going to get saved. I can't preach from Psalms and get you saved. Not exclusively. I can't go in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 uh, which talks about love. That won't get you saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 that talks about dealing with money. Uh, uh, that won't get you saved. We got to preach the gospel, which is that, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin, according to the scripture, that he was buried and raised again the third day, according to the scripture. That's what has to be preached so that people can get saved and not go to hell. Amen. That's what Paul's mission was. That's what he was emphasizing throughout this book. That's all he wanted to do is preach the gospel at whatever cost. And we found out that cost was great. It cost him his life. And he knew it was going to cost him his life. But he did it anyway. Mm. When you know you're going to die for something and you keep doing it, that's either crazy or you are serious about what you're doing. Amen. Paul knew that the only way people could, die, could, could, could avoid hell is by receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. That they must repent of their sin and con confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead and they're going to be saved. And that's the only way people get saved. Mm -hmm. You don't get saved because your mama went to church. You don't get saved because your daddy went to church. You don't get saved because your granddaddy was a deacon. You don't get saved because your grandmama was a what was a deaconess. Amen. You don't get saved because you sing in the choir. Amen. You don't get saved because you preach the gospel. Amen. Let that part soak in for a minute. Because hmm. I'm I, I know there's some folk preaching the gospel that don't even believe it. They never truly trusted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Hard to believe, but it, but it is. Jesus said, not everybody's going to be saved. That's what Jesus said. And he was talking about, he was, his reference at that point was the religious folk in Jerusalem who were getting ready to kill him. He said, not everybody's going to be saved. In fact, he said, there will be few who will be saved. Because the pathway to salvation is a narrow path. The gospel message is literally bringing light into a dark place. And the truth of the matter is, men love darkness rather than light. Lost men can't find the Savior. So we got to shine the light of the gospel. The gospel is light. And, and, and the apostle John put it this way. Daisy, do me a favor. I'll go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, and 5 through 7. Read that for me. I need y'all to get this. This then is the message which we have heard of him. This is John talking about Jesus. Go ahead. And declare unto you that God is light. That God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Mm -hmm. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say we have fellowship with God, but yet walk in darkness, we lie to ourselves. Keep reading, Daisy. But if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, as he is in the as light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us boy, from all sin. Boy, look at him. This was John talking. Trying to explain further what, what Paul was trying to preach about. This is why we preach. This is why we preach. Now throughout the chapter, uh, Paul was exhorting those who were going to come after him that they would do the same thing. That's preach the gospel. And, and he gives great instructions on how to accomplish the assignment. And, and that brings us to, to the message today. We saw that verse, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, verse 7 that was read by uh, 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 Zion. Uh, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And, and what Paul is doing, he's making this contrast between the valuable content and the cheap disposable container that it contains, that, that, that's holding it. The content is the gospel. The container is the preacher. You see, I, I, this is just, you know, me, we talked about this a, a, a couple of weeks ago. These bodies of ours, they falling apart. These are jars of clay. And ain't nothing, I mean, I put on this. Y'all like my suit? Huh? Y'all see this? I knew I was going to be preaching this today, so I dressed up a little bit. But this thing, I put on this nice tie and this nice, pretty vest. Didn't cost me that much, but it looked pretty. You know, you can put a lipstick on a pig and he's still a pig. You, I, you know, I made myself look good today. And that's all we can do, make ourselves look good because there's nothing good about us. Hmm. You, you, you know, these jars of clay. But the, but the gospel was the precious content. The truth of the word of God is what's priceless. Is what's priceless. <coughs> the gospel message, the truth of God, that's priceless. The, the, the word that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin, that's priceless. You can't put a, a that's the most valuable thing in the world. It called, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That word is priceless. It's priceless because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes it. To everyone who will believe it. Excluding nobody. If you can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he died a vicarious death on a cross to save you from your sin, and you believe that he died for you, you confess your sin, you see yourself the way God sees you as a sinner, but you also see the need for a Savior, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He ain't turning nobody down. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. He said, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast him out. Amen. He don't care about what, about what you did. You know, God don't do background checks. Hmm. Yeah, I already know him. <laughs> uh, God don't, I was talking, you know, I, I went to a, a prayer breakfast uh, yesterday with some of the brothers from, um, uh, uh, Saved by Grace Ministry, Brother Joey Harrison uh, had uh, 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 sponsored this this prep breakfast, and, and I and I have prep breakfast with some of my other buddies every third Saturday. We meet at IHOP, and, and and we just pray for each other, and we have breakfast and fellowship, and, and that's what we did on yesterday. And, and as we were kind of sharing testimony, I, I, I shared with the brethren how um, I was trying to help my youngest daughter get an apartment. <coughs> And I, I, and I thought about doing what my mama did for, for me and my brother Dwight and Benji about 40 years ago. What she did, she co-signed a, a lease. And, and we came home from work. We was working. And me and Dwight both had jobs. I was working at Montgomery Ward and uh, Dwight was working at a place that builds lawn furniture. And, um, and uh, 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 mama came home. We came home from work. She had her sign these papers. And we came home from work the next day. She had us. Uh, she handed us some keys. Said, "This y'all new address." That's how she put us out the house. She ain't just kick us out. She put, you know, she helped us. See, the thing is, we need. She paid the first month's rent, the last month's rent, and the and the security deposit. And she had good credit. 
she had the credit and the deposit money. And we could pay the rent once we got in there, but we couldn't come up with that first month rent, the last month rent, and a security deposit. So she did all that, and she actually put the light bill on her name, or added that, uh, the uh, apartment light bill on her light bill. It stayed on there for one month. She saw how, how big that light bill is. She said, y'all got to pay the rent and the light bill. I'm sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> okay? So I thought I'd do that for my daughter. So I signed the lease. So the, uh, and so the my daughter, Angelina, could get an apartment. And these folk, they did a background check on me. And, and uh, they... They ignored my 745 credit score. So I, I, y'all know I, I got a new car. Y'all see my new car? I put it on Facebook. I got a new car. And I, I actually could have got the car with just a signature and no money down. Because that's what a 745 credit score would do. Just sign and drive with approved credit. You see that in fine print when they be trying to sell them cars. Them folk ignored my credit score and they looked at my background and told my daughter she couldn't get the apartment. That's messed up. We well, see, God don't. God ain't like that. Uh, he, these earthen vessels. See, in, in that day, uh, you, you know, when, 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 when Paul say the the uh, not only earth vessels, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, they the the, the 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 treasure in earthen vessels. He was talking about the gospel message itself. That's what the treasure is. And, and the only thing that makes the vessel important is what's in it. Because those same earthen vessels, those were the same vessels they used, um, uh, 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 you know, the clay pot. They used them for everything. Uh, the plastic wasn't invented yet. So they, they take clay and they make pot. And they, they earthenware, clay pots. Uh, that's what they use at the wash basins. That's what they use. Uh, can I say this? Piss pots. These are garbage cans. But the the precious content was the gospel. You know when they found the. The Dead Sea Scrolls in Qumran, the caves of Qumran. A little boy was out playing in the woods and he threw a rock and he heard that where the rock landed, he heard a clink. And uh, what had happened, the rock had broken these clay pots and the Dead Sea, they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. These were just very uh, uh, cheap pots, but they had the Dead Sea Scrolls in them. You, you, know, you, uh, you, you know, you might have a, a, a little stash box that you carry and keep your valuables in. See, back in those days, they didn't have um, a, a, a safe, there were no uh, safe deposit boxes. People would bury stuff and um, or put it in clay pots and it might be very valuable. You can put it in any pot you want, but it, it, it might be very valuable. But the, the, the containers, uh, the, 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 the content was valuable but the, per, the pot itself, the container, uh, was not so. So you had this, this valuable, uh, uh, precious content, but in, in, in imperfect containers. Uh, that is, uh, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Read that for me. I, I want you to get this. This is what uh, Paul, uh, Paul, this is Paul talking about these same vessels but uh, in the letter to Timothy. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. See, so in a great house, you, you know, you might see a, a, a gold a, a vase or a, a, a gold container where you might have your diamonds and jewels, but you also might see something made out of silver. But in that same house, you might see old wooden box that they keep new. Well, you know, you, you know, they wouldn't have newspapers. It's something not so valuable. But 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 you could also put something very valuable in it. This, this is the idea. The idea is is the container is not that important. What's in the container? Uh, the man is not important. But what's in the man? When the gospel message is in the man, the man becomes important. 
Now I'm preaching the gospel and I put on this tie this morning and this nice little pretty vest. But uh, 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 last week I had on a dashiki preaching the same gospel. Some, day, some day, you know, we, we, us clergymen, we put on the robes and sometimes we put the collars on to make us look important. But that day, that's, the only thing that's important is the fact that we preach in the gospel. The power to, to change lives is not in us. It's in the gospel message. It's a God, not us. That's what Paul was trying to say. And, and you see, and he, he made this, this emphasis because uh, they were attacking Paul's character. They were attacking how he looked. Uh, he was, some say he was a little hunchback. Uh, some say he spoke kind of funny. And, and the people uh, criticized him. And Paul said, okay, all that's right. Ain't about too much. But what I'm talking about is the, is the most important thing in the world. What, what nothing impressive about Paul. Paul was even surprised that God would use him. But that's what God do. Y'all remember that message I did once upon a time uh, for sinners only? God chooses sinners. He chooses the, the weak things of this world to, 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 to confound the wise. The foolishness of this world by the world standards. You know, when them folks looked at my background and, and said my daughter couldn't get that apartment based on, on something in my history. God don't look at our history. Because his story is different from man's story. God, look at, he might look at your background, all right, so this one here, he's a, he jacked up, he tore up on the floor, I can use him. But this one right here, with uh, all his act together, uh, he, he real stuck on himself, I can't use him. Mm -hmm. See, see you, you, you know, it's, it, the treasure is in the earth and vessels. The treasure is on the inside, Amen. not what it's made out of. And, and, and as Paul was talking here, you saw, you, you see, uh, at that time, uh, the most noble scholars in the world were actually in Egypt. Egypt had the greatest library in antiquity in Alexandria. Well, you know, when the Muslims came in in uh, 600 AD, they, they, they burned all that and they, they destroyed that, uh, that library, but uh, everybody knew it was there. They burned all the books and they destroyed it, but it was there. The greatest library in the world was in, was in Alexandria, Egypt. The greatest philosophers at that time, they were in Greece. A, a God bypassed men like Aristotle and Socrates. When he told, he could have he uh, allowed them to write the gospel. He could have revealed it to them, but he couldn't use them. Because they didn't believe. The greatest political minds were in Rome. Uh, he didn't use any of them. He didn't use people like Cicero. He didn't use uh, men like uh, Marcus Aurelius. He could have used some of them. Uh, the greatest uh, 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 religious minds were in Jerusalem. He didn't use none of them. Those were the ones Jesus told, you're not going to get saved. You can't be saved. God didn't use them. He, 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 God chose to use the foolishness of the gospel to confound the wise. He said, not many noble, not many wise going to be called. The wisdom of this world. Those men that I just named, they had the wisdom of this world by the world standards. Those were, you'd have thought that those were the ones that God would have chosen to write the, his book. But he chose men like Moses, who was a stutterer. He chose a man like David, who was a murderer and adulterer. He chose men like Isaiah, who, 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 who cussed. And he lived around people who cussed. You ever been to the club on the corner watching the boys cuss? Every other word come out of their mouth is a cuss. I used to be like that myself. Well, that's how Isaiah was. But when the Lord said, who, who can I send? Uh, and Isaiah said, Lord, send me. But he was a cusser. 
And the first thing the Lord did was cleaned up his mouth. He he take men who might have been addicts, and the first thing he do is take that 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 that, that desire for drugs and alcohol out of their mouth. He, he, he takes people who might have had all kinds of issues and, and he, he saves them, he transforms their lives and he don't worry about what it used to be because he knows what they can be. God going to make something out of you. Don't worry about what you was. Don't worry about the fact that your mom and daddy never got married. Don't worry about the fact that you might be the product of a rape. Don't worry about the fact that you, you might have come into this world because uh, your mama had a bad day. God don't, God don't worry about stuff like that. He takes the unqualified and qualifies them for his purpose. Yeah. Earthen vessels. Clay pots. But this what this this what I really like. <laughs> you know, this that, that reference in, in, in 2 Timothy, that, that was good. And that lets you know God can use anybody. Because see, those some of the, the clay pots that, that that Paul was referring to, you know, like I said, it's like the wash pots and, and, and the, the laboratory pots. They were made out of clay, garbage cans, piss pot. It looked out like the country. Uh, they, you know, they wasn't no indoor plumbing. You had pots, and you filled up the pots, and then you just dumped them out outside later clay pots but the idea here is the message of the gospel that's what made the pots valuable when you carry the gospel when you got the word of God in your heart when you got the word of God when God can use you to, to open up your mouth and say something for his glory imagine young people you got the gospel message in your heart You got the gospel. You know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. And if you can share that with your friends, they can get saved too. Ain't nothing special about you, but you got the gospel. Amen. You got the most precious, the most valuable uh, uh, truth in the world that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. The power is not in you. It's in the word. It's in the truth that you speak. If you're not speaking truth, you might as well shut up and sit down. Or you might make some money telling lies. You might gain some popularity. But this treasure in earthen vessels. <clears throat> you know, the idea that the messengers need to, 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 to be willing to suffer for the gospel's sake, that's paramount. That, that was the idea of the, the last two messages we did. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the glory of suffering. The last two messages leading up to this one. And, and the idea here, see those clay pots, those, 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 those okay, you know, just uh, really cheap parts, disposable parts, subject to abuse. These unremarkable people carrying a remarkable message. And, and, and when, the, the, when they are subjected to abuse and persecution, Somehow they become more effective. See, Paul knew that they were going to kill him. They were trying to kill him all the while. And he kept preaching. And, and it, this, it, 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 the, the clay pots, here he is, he's shining the light of the truth, the truth of God into a, into a dark and lost world. The light of the gospel. The light of God's truth. He has that light. You carry the light. Uh, my, my good friend, Deacon Ernest, uh, uh, Curtis Jackson of uh, 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 Mount Olive in Longwood, he used to call the saints lights. I haven't seen Curtis in 20 years. But uh, he, that's what he called the saints, lights. Hey, how y'all lights doing today? That's how, that's how he referred to other people in the church. He called them lights. And the idea is that you got your light shining. When you open up your mouth, you're speaking truth. You're showing love. You're a light. 
That's what Jesus was talking about. He said, let your light shine so brightly among men that uh, 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 that men will see you a mile off. You, you know, when you are saved and you feel with the Holy Ghost, uh, the love of God is exuding from your heart. Uh, you, you, when you walk into the room, people know you're coming. Uh, you, uh, uh, you, uh, 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 the Lord, it don't surprise me that your teachers kind of stick out their neck for you because your light be shining in a dark place. Your light be shining. It, it, it does not, I'm not surprised that things happen for you because your light shines. You, 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 you draw people to you. Imagine now you actually do the word. <laughs> you could actually lead a revival in your classroom. Believe it or not, you could lead a revival in your classroom and the teacher wouldn't stop it. You, you, your light should shine. Allow your light to shine so bright. There ain't nothing about you. All they do is just look at your track record. But you got the but you got the message. I mean, I've heard you. It's in you a little bit. It needs to come out. You need to go into a, an abundance so it'll come out in abundance. But, but, but there's an anointing on you. God is going to use you powerfully one day if you let him. You know, this is, it's, um, it's just the time in which we live. And, and um, I, I can imagine right now, my, my hope and prayer, like my, my grandsons, Kendall and, and Christian, and, and little Jamal, that they'll get the, 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 the message of the gospel in them so profoundly that they can, they can make changes in the world. See, when you have that, that priceless treasure, it ain't so much about you, it's about the message. When you got the message, that makes you important. Without the message, you just, you, you like that, that, you like that part that, they, that, cont that contains the pea. You like that waste basket, you're nothing. But when you got that priceless treasure, the gospel message, Let me share this with you. This is from, from uh, uh, um, in the book of Judges. There's a story about a man named Gideon. Uh, Gideon was one of the judges. And uh, Judges chapter 6, I ain't going to go there, but um, in uh, Judges chapter 6, God uh, chose Gideon as a judge. And he would deliver the children of Israel from the Amalekites and the Midianites. The, the, you know, because uh, th this was a time when uh, they had no king over them, and, and everybody did what was right in their own eyes, and they and they they stayed in trouble. So God would deliver a judge who would come and deliver them, and then they go back in because they sinned, they fall back into it, and they need somebody else to deliver. But this time it was Gideon's time. Uh, 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 Gideon chapter 6 talked about uh, the, 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 the fleece, how uh, uh, God was able to reveal himself using the fleece. But in chapter 7 of Gideon, uh, Gideon got a, a message from, um, uh, 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 a message of God got to him and told him that, uh, that he had a vision of Gideon delivering the children of Israel from the, Mid the Midianites. And, and uh, Gideon had... Uh, the army, but he had to reduce the army down to 300 men. And, and go the, the 10,000 men, it was too many. Uh, uh, but uh, it wasn't enough to win, but it was too many for God to use. So when God do it, God want to make it so that you know that it was God and not you. Same principle here. The power may be of God and not in us. And, and the, the, so the messenger went to, to Gideon and, and uh, Gideon divided the 300 into companies of 100. He led one group of 100, and two other men led groups of 100. And I pick it up right there, Judges chapter 7, verse 19. So Gideon and 100 men were with him, came into the outside of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and then blew the trumpet. 
and break the pictures that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pictures and held the lamps in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand to blow with all. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. See, what happened, the, the, the lamps were inside the pot. They, it was, they, 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 when they had approached, they had surrounded the Midianites and the Malachites' army, and uh, but they were strategically they had already surrounded one but a few of them, and, and, and they had the light. They were able to sneak up on them because the light was in in these clay pots, and, and, and uh, the, the clay pots had just enough air to keep the, the fire burning, and it, 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 it emitted just enough light so that they can uh, not fall and trip but the, the folk around them they might have thought it was like uh, like fireflies uh, uh, flickering that's, that's how subdued the light would have been so the angel of the Lord told uh, Gideon uh, the, uh, um, break, the, break the, the clay pots and blow the trumpets and when they did, all that light came around them people, and then the trumpets blew, and the men, the Malachites and the Mennonites went to, went to killing them off each other. They started fighting each other. They were confused. See, when, when the, the, the pots were broken, <coughs> the light was revealed. When the preacher of the gospel is enduring, when he removes the clay, he removes the self. When you get self out of the way. Mm. When you get self out of the way. Amen. The light can shine. And do what only the light can do. Word. When you in the way the light can shine. Mm. Glory. When, when the clay had to be broken. So that the light that was inside can, can, can shine. Amen. Get yourself out of the way. Yes. Get that bad attitude you have out of the way. Yes. Get that smart mouth of yours out of the way. Yes. Get that, get that conceit of yours out of the way. God could use those noble men. God chose ignorant fishermen, well, tax collectors, yeah. people with all kinds of issues. Yes. He chose them yes. to be the messengers of the gospel yes. because the gospel was worth it. Yes. And when you get yourself out of the way, God can use you. Amen. That's why when, 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 when Paul said it this way, Days and pick me up right there, Second Corinthians four verses eight through nine. We're gonna finish up with those those scriptures. We are troubled on every side. When, 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 when the, the the breaking of Paul the clay pot, he calls him to say, "We are troubled on every side." But what? Yet not distressed. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed. We are perplexed. But what? But not in despair. But not in despair. Persecuted. We are persecuted. They're trying to kill us all the time. But what? But not forsaken. But not forsaken. Cast down. Cast down. But not destroyed. But not destroyed. You can attack the clay pot all you want to. All you're going to do is make the light shine brighter. Father in heaven, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of standing before your children one more time and to share the unadulterated word of God. So I thank you right now, Lord, for allowing old green. Now you let me put on this nice little suit today. But I know it's not about me. It's about you, and it's about your truth. And I pray that someone listening to the sound of my voice, I know I'm not this eloquent speaker, and I, I, I never learned how to hoop. I, I never could sing. But I can only do but preach the truth. So I pray right now that this word will find a, an ear to hear. Because I can only speak what thus saith the Lord. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer.
And we're going to have our Holy Communion. Today's going to read the scripture from 1 Corinthians. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastising of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. As we partake of the bread and the wine. The bread represents the body, the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, take, eat, eat all of it. And the bread represents the presence of God in our everyday life. So as you eat the bread, you are recognizing the presence of God in you. He said, take this cup and drink ye all of it for the remission of sin. The cup represents the blood of our Lord, the covenant of the New Testament. We are renewing the covenant. Every time we do this, it's like a husband and wife renewing their vows at the altar. So drink ye all of it. Boy, this thing got a little kick to it. <laughs> I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know at this time, uh, those of you that want to give to the ministry, you may do so. You may use the cash app or jail. Of course, we will take cash. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Father in heaven, we ask you right now to bless these gifts. Bless those who gave and those who had desired to give and had it not. And may this offer be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll see y'all next time. And we want to a benediction today. But as they departed, they went out onto the Mount of Olives and they sang a hymn. Uh, we'll see y'all on Wednesday night. We'll be doing, coming from the book of Revelation. Uh, we're beginning on chapter 11, on the book of Revelation 11, 12, and 13. Those are the chapters that we're going to do this coming Wednesday night at 725. We'll see you all next time, next Sunday.
we're actually going to begin, we're going back to the Gospel of Luke. We're going to pick up where we left off last time. We're still, we've been in the, the last few days of the life of Christ, but now it's coming to a climax and the way the schedule will work um, on Resurrection Sunday morning, he's going to be walking out on Resurrection Ground. That will be the message. So we'll see y'all next time.